welcome everyone who has joined us and is studying animal physiology. Our second practice has the topic of the physiology of excitability tissues and the laws ex excitation. Today we will look at a few questions. Uh, the first is the structure of the cell membrane and how it allows ions uh, and molecules to the pass through. The second question is how the electric potential arises on the surface of the membrane. We have several videos and labs work. So, on the second slide we see a model of the cell membrane, how it's built. Uh, as you know, it's a builder of phospholipids and uh, some kinds of molecules of proteins and carbohydrates connected to with it. Uh, and on the third slide I will leave links to this uh, video. In the description to this video on the channel you will learn how the membrane is built. Uh, the membrane has several uh, permeability and how we will understand why. why. Same. Um, slide 4. <clears throat> so, uh, let's start to study how many different kinds of uh, uh, molecules we can find on the membrane. At first, because of uh, phospholipid bilars, of course, uh, uh, the membrane has semi permeability. At first, um, uh, on this slide, we can see as the phospholipid bilar, these molecules have the hydrophobic heads uh, and tails, uh, sorry, hydrophobic tails and hydrophilic heads, and uh, tails are always hidden inside the bilar. Uh, uh, on the next slide, uh, we can see the different kind of lipid molecules, for example, glycolipids and even sterols. Glycolipids uh, are most in the membrane. Uh, uh, glycophospholipids are about 2% in total membrane molecules. As they stabilize the membrane, are responsible for the cell recognition, for example, blood type. Uh, sterols in uh, animal cells, uh, it's cholesterol molecule, provides uh, fluidity and plasticity of membrane, especially at low temperatures. Therefore, there is a lot uh, of cholesterol molecules in the cell membrane of cold-blooded animals. Next slide, carbohydrates. Membrane carbohydrates, these molecules are most outside this membrane and associate with proteins and lipids. They are complex of molecules. They are form a glycocalyx and have several of the following function. In future, when we will discuss about digestive system, uh, we can find these molecules on the surface of uh, tubes of digestive um, organs. The main molecules that we will talk about today are proteins. Proteins, the following molecules are proteins on this slide. Um, there are three types of membrane proteins, integral, superficial and fixed. fixed. Uh, we have listened to the main molecules uh, that make up the membrane and move on to its function. The slide shows the main function of the cell uh, membrane, the cell membrane function. And uh, let's take a look at transport functions. The main fu uh, function of the membrane is just transport. Move molecules uh, inside the cell and outside the cell. Um, here I leave links to the video about membrane transport and I leave these links uh, 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 to this video. Uh, so, let's start to study transport across membranes. How you know, 
uh, from the school program. I, I hope uh, you know that we can find uh, the, the macro and micro transport. Uh, we divided uh, macro transport uh, inside endocytosis uh, and uh, movement inside the cell, for example, pinocytosis and phagocytosis. And exocytosis. Exocytosis, uh, it is a movement outside the cell. Some products which uh, the cell don't need to keep inside. Uh, all these kinds of transport uh, are the transport of large molecules and their complexes. Uh, so the next slide. Uh, it is about microtransport. Microtransport is divided into active and passive transport. Let's look at passive transport first. The diffusion, osmosis and filtration. And uh, you see this uh, active transport can be uh, different too. So next one, um, slide about, about the microtransport is divided and at first we uh, look on the passive transport and then general characteristic of passive transport is that don't need ATP molecules don't need any energy um, first kind it is just simple diffusion uh, of non-polar and fat-soluble molecules, fat-soluble vitamins, for example, gases, uh, along the concentration gradient. So this kind of molecules can move through the pillar of phospholipids very easy, and uh, there you can see some kinds of molecules which can to move through the pillar of phospholipids and uh, what uh, molecules can move through the pillar. Uh, you see it's some kinds of uh, polar molecules. So ne next slide. Uh, facilitated diffusion passes through the special channels. Channels, it is the proteins channel, uh, protein pore, uh, um, and another type Another type of passive transport is osmos, osmosis. Water can uh, enter the cells through channels, uh, special channels, aquaporins, and even through the phospholipid bilar. How you see, even through the lipids bilar. Here we need to discuss the issue to, uh, of tonicity of the environment. Uh, tonicity. Ability of solution to change shape or tone of cells by changing water volume inside. So we can to share the liquids uh, on isotonic, uh, hypertonic, e hypotonic. Isotonic uh, equal concentration solutes, hypertonic high concentration of solutes, and hypotonic at the lower concentration of solutes. Uh, usually we can see this process on red blood cells, red blood cells. Uh, effect of solution on red blood cells is a very important question for living cells at all. So I leave the link, you see, uh, and you can watch the video about this process. Let's start with the active transport. Now, what is this active transport? Mm -hmm. Here you need the energy, uh, ATP molecules, and um, uh, we can find uh, exo and exo endocytosis use energy too. Macromolecules need energy always. Uh, so it is also active transport, kind of active transport. The movement of molecules passes against the concentration gradient with the help of special channels, protein channels, but against concentration gradient to push these molecules through you need energy, always. In this kind of transport we can find two main, primary active transport and secondary active transport. 
primary active transport of ions with the help of enzyme systems. Enzyme systems need energy, uh, break down the ATP molecule and can move the parts of proteins. Secondary active transport move more than one substance of, uh, at the same time. So we can move these uh, uh, ions as uh, a kind of symport. Two substances move in the same direction. Uh, like in this part of the picture and sometimes antiport the two substances cross in a opposite direction one into and out one more example uh, all molecules have their own charge uh, there is a question how does ions and their movement affect on the charge of the cell membrane? How you see when the sodium ion has a charge and potassium ions has a charge and what we can find? State of the rest for the cell membrane. What is this? In a state of the rest, in the normal state, the membrane permeable to potassium ions. Potassium levels the cell uh, and creates a positive charge on the surface of the membrane. How we can see the plus uh, on the inner side. Uh, charge on outer surface of the membrane. Uh, additionally, the majority of cells contain internal components, uh, a lot of negative charge molecules. For example, even proteins have the negative charge, which add up to negative, generate uh, a negative inner charge. Despite the enormous quantity of positive charge, of potassium ions. This charge is called the rest membrane potential. And I leave the links uh, on this uh, slide. You can watch the video uh, about uh, passive and active transport, uh, endocytosis and exocytosis, and especially about rest and membrane potential and even action potential, resting potential and action potential. Resting membrane potential isn't uh, the stable state. Uh, when in the tissue, uh, the, our nerve system uh, uh, moves the signal, special electricity signal, uh, the all cells and uh, uh, all membranes uh, uh, have a special reaction, depolarization. It is the removing of polarity by a process or action. Depolarization is when a charge occur inside the cells uh, that cause the distribution of electrical charge uh, to alter leaving the cell with a less negative charge than the outside. Depolarization occur as a result of the opening of sodium channels. It is when the voltage gate sodium channels open. This causes the positive charge sodium ions to float into the cell. This causes depolarization and during depolarization the cells normally negative internal charge momentarily changes to the positive one less negative than previous and we will see this first line it is the rest potential and the difference between the voltage is about minus 70 volt millivolt then when the channels of the um, sodium are open and all sodium ions move inside the cells uh, this uh, graphic start uh, the changes and we see this part depolarization. In this moment we can say it about uh, the state, special state of the cells is called an action potential. And uh, I leave the special video about action potential in the neuron. And uh, next, 
uh, we can find the next slide about action potential phases. So what phases you see? Slow depolarization, very little time, quick depolarization, and after that very quick repolarization, slow repolarization, and after potential hyperpolarization. So what is this repolarization? Repolarization is the phase during which the inner resting potential of the cell membrane is restored. Uh, recovery, restore it, is due to the work of the sodium potassium pumps, special pumps which need to ATP molecules to move ions outside and inside. So we need to move sodium ions outside and potassium ions inside so on this slide you can see this process but it is better to look through the video of course the cause uh, can be any stimulus and different stimulus can move ions inside and outside it can be just mechanical, temperature, chemical, biological, but uh, as usual it is electricity. Electricity signal it is a norm signal for the all our nerve system and especially this generate in neurons. But some conditions are necessary. There are uh, some conditions for AP development. Depolarization should reach critical level. Sodium influx should be 20 times more than potassium and regenerative repolarization should start. So next slide. Uh, loss of irritation. They are called, this, all these uh, needs we call it uh, loss or irritation loss. And we see other uh, rules which describe uh, requirements for the stimulus uh, to cause excitation. They are law of polarity, law of force, law of time, duration of stimulation, and law of steepness. So, what is the difference? The difference in uh, body cells. Uh, more of them respond to the effects of the cha change uh, in membrane uh, metabolism. Just change the metabolism inside of uh, cell, and they are called irritable. Also, can generate a special response, uh, an excited one. Uh, there are the three tissues in the body: muscle tissues, and these tissues can contract. Uh, correspond and muscle contraction. Nerve tissues, tissues uh, to the generate uh, of a nerve impulse and its conduction and uh, rentler uh, its, uh, tissues to the formation and the release of secrets, for example, hormones. And laws of irritation to these different tissues are different. Uh, we can find on the slide, you see the conditions that are necessary for this formation. Formation is the action potential. The force is different for different cells. So we find the um, uh, law of force. For different cells, the real bars are different. Uh, what is the real bars? It is the minimum force. Uh, uh, which could uh, to do some changes in the membrane cell. So real bus this is a minimal force capable of causing cell excitation. And uh, this law about these laws on uh, next some slides. So if the force is close to the real bus but less the force the real bus will cause just a local response. What is the local response? It is the same change in uh, the moving of ions through the membrane but uh, it's not enough to move this 
wave through all membranes who push it on the different cells around so it is the properties for a local response doesn't uh, obey all or nothing law local response uh, amplitude depends on the force of the stimulus uh, the greater is the stimulus, the higher is the uh, local response magnitude, doesn't spread to waste distance and uh, can't be summed up in time and space of the sun reaches critical repolarization level as uh, they can be transformed into active potential so it's uh, local uh, changes on the membrane uh, can to transform so it's a new law it is the first time a law about how uh, we can um, how quickly we can to find an uh, answer of the cells depend on the horse. If we have the horse uh, in one real buzzer, we have, for example, three uh, milliseconds to answer. If we take the two time more real buzz, uh, we can have the answer quickly uh, than previous one. So and. Uh, one more important law it is accommodation uh, it is um, uh, about the answer how how we can have if answer on the membrane it depends on the how quickly and how uh, uh, how low steps of stimul we have on the surface of membrane Today we will discuss about the refractory period um, in time after an action potential is generated during which the excitable cell cannot produce another action potential and there are two sub-phases of the, this period. Absolute uh, uh, refractority and um, relative refractority. Absolutely refractory, perhaps the depolarization and around two thirds of repolarization phase. A new action potential cannot be generated in this uh, phase of uh, refractory, absolutely. And after that, after time, we have relatively refractory periods, uh, and this time is, is um, membrane and uh, the cell can give the answer where a little but can so we have the change in excitability in different phases of the excitation cycle the first period of increased excitability corresponds to a local response increased excitability the period of absolute refractoriness corresponds to the depolarization phase of the action potential the peak and the depend beginning to the repolarization phase the excitability is reproduced to its complete absence during the peak. The period of relative refractoriness corresponds to the remaining part of the repolarization phase. The excitability is gradually restored to the inner level. The supernormal period corresponds to the phases phase of trace repolarization of the action potential, negative trace, potential excitability is increased the subnormal period corresponds to the phase of trace hyperpolarization of the action potential reduced excitability so we see the part of the neuron axon it's just part of one nerve cell and we see that different stimulus can uh, be the cause of uh, this process. Uh, just uh, this we have receptor like uh, example, but all this we can find on the video on our page. Uh, 
uh, of Moodle physiology of animals uh, you should look through the videos cell structure and action potential in neurons for this practical we have the first test test about physiology of excitability tissues so you should and we have the practical practical in our notebook mm, uh, i hope you download this book uh, from the uh, our page and you should open the pages uh, and read the text and after that uh, we uh, will have the lab works uh, but if you don't have the text i just uh, have uh, slides uh, about uh, irritability of different cells and uh, tissues which just change the uh, metabolism and uh, you know uh, uh, three tissues muscular nervous and secretory tissues belong to excitable ones and uh, then uh, we have this work uh, this work uh, it's first lab work and uh, here we just uh, can to prepare the frog to the uh, lab work how you see it is a look through the text and uh, a lot of information about it uh, how to prepare the frog and uh, now we will have the video we will see the video about how to do the preparation of frog and uh, all our next uh, lab works uh, we will use the frog for uh, this process and uh, just start to look through the video So the teacher said that uh, we have first uh, uh, anesthesia for the frog. And after that, do decapitation of frog. And damage the spinal cord. After that, to prepare the rheoscopic legs. to move out the skin from the legs
this rheoscopic legs. And then we uh, will find the nerve, ischiac nerve, on the back side of the... Uh, hip, of the hip. do all preparation very accurately. To the knee joint and move out the hip. It is a part of spinal cord. It is a little white knit it is a nerve and muscle. And helic tendon. So we can find, uh, find on the slide all this anatomical position of the celiac nerve and hastroidemus muscle and uh, um, on the page, I don't remember, it is about uh, on the um, figure 29. So after that we need to discuss about uh, how quickly tissue can uh, do reaction on the irritation and uh, um, irritability of nerve uh, and muscle lab work. Uh, let's see the video. We will use the electricity for this process and uh, in a text of our practical book I, I ask you to read this information about equipment which we can use in our lab works. 
And um, now we can find the real bars for the nerve tissues and for the muscle tissues. As you see the contraction of the muscle, we can see. And now the muscles start to contract. You see, you see this contraction. To do the same for the muscle tissues. The previous force is not enough. Okay. How we see for the nerve tissues, it's uh, the horse is less than for the muscle tissues. So, uh, we have homework uh, for you today in book Animal Physiology from the Trans to Organism. You should read the pages uh, you see about membrane physiology of the cell and how you know I, I will leave the links with the video, a lot of video for today and the second part of the, our practice for today you should finish your first test of this semester. It is a test uh, about uh, the term physiology of excitability tissues. So let's see you and hear you on the next uh, our practice. Bye bye.